after we are off live. We can start. More sir. Yes, yes. Please, please start. Good morning. A very good morning to all of you, and a warm welcome to the virtual national level students development program, an innovative and noble idea of Amritwani College of Pharmacy, Sangamne, where we can witness promising evolution from learner to the professionals. We are pleased to welcome. Chief Guest for the program, respected Dr. Sohan Chitlange, Chairman, Board of Studies, Pharmaceutical Chemistry, Savitri Bai Phule, Pune University, and Principal, Dr. D.Y. Patil Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research, Pune. We heartily welcome you, sir, on this auspicious occasion. We are welcoming you, sir, to inaugurate and grace this function. We are fascinated to announce today first speaker of student development program, Ms. Nirja Bhangre, Senior Research Associate, Glide Sciences, California, USA. Ms. Nirja, we heartily welcome you. We welcome all the participants who are with us virtually for this mind enriching program. Also, we have with us our future speakers in this program, uh, Mr. Park Thakkar, Dr. Mukesh Sonone, uh, and uh, in short, uh, others will join. We also welcome Mr. Prashant Vishpande, and shortly, other speakers will join us on this auspicious occasion. We welcome you all. Now, I would like to request respected principal Dr. M.J. Chavan, sir, to address the participants and welcome them. Please, sir. Morning, all of you. Uh, as a principal of Organizing Institute, Amrutwaini College of Pharmacy, I take great pride in welcoming all the learners participating in this national level student development program. Hope you are healthy and doing well in the COVID pandemic. It's our great pleasure to have with us today Chairman, Board of Studies, Pharmaceutical Chemistry, Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University, and Principal, Dr. D.Y. Patil Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research, Pimpri, Dr. Sohan Chitlange. We welcome you, sir, and express gratitude for accepting our invitation. Welcome, sir. Yes. I would like to draw, draw, draw you attention to the fact that our Amrutwaini College of Pharmacy is NBA accredited and committed to innovative education. We are sincerely attempting to boost the awareness of the student through academics and co-curricular activities. It's our pride that students have overwhelming response to Amrutwaini College of Pharmacy for not only for B Pharmacy program, but also for MPharm programs. We are running PhD programs to the student who are really wanted to excel their career in the research. Amrutwaini College of Pharmacy Sangamner always focuses on the holistic development of the student through experience on developing values, nurturing skills, and moving towards knowledge. We try to identify students' knowledge gap and plan the national level student development program to cater the expectation of the pharma industry. It is important because students' skill determine their ability to execute the plan with success. This national level student development program is aimed to inculcate recent advances in pharmaceutical education. The main objective of the program is to update the knowledge of learner through experts and researchers to sustain the professional growth. This virtual national level student development program is one of our routine endeavors to nourish the research attitude of the student. Today, we have the first informative session of our alumna, Senior Research Associate of Gilland Sciences, California, USA, Ms. Neeraja Bhangare, on the topic Roadmap to the Career in USA. Along with this, during the four-month period, we planned 14 informative sessions of our distinguished alumni, Sambhaji Khedkar, Amit Pause, Prashant Deshpande, Parth Thakkar, Prasad Gunjar, Sarojini Ghule, 
स्वप्निल घोरपडे सागर पासते मिस्टर प्रमोद भिसे डॉक्टर मुकेश सोनवणे मिस्टर जालिंदर सागर मिस्टर रत्ना अहिरराव अँड मिस्टर संतोष भुजबळ हु आर एक्सपर्ट्स इन द डिफरंट फार्मा सेक्टर होप दिस विल डेफिनेटली अपडेट युअर नॉलेज to conclude i would like to express my appreciation to the president of amrutwani city and shikshan vikas sanstha and revenue minister maharashtra government honorable bala saheb thorat saheb our trustee member of legislative council honorable dr sudhir ji tambe saheb our trustee sau sharoitai deshmukh our chief executive officer shri anil shinde saheb for providing excellent opportunity to organize this national level student development program once again i welcome you all and sincerely hope that you will enjoy informative session of programs and i am sure you will have fruitful and rewarding exchange of uh, thoughts along with the experts and uh, uh, now the, at this moment uh, 500 plus participants are joining the uh, virtual programs thank you very much sir thank you thank you sir uh, now i I would like to request Professor S D Gunza to introduce our chief guest, respected Dr. Sohan Chitlangi sir. Please, Gunza sir. Good morning, all. I give you immense pleasure to introduce Dr. Sohan Chitlangi, who is presently working as a principal and professor at Dr. T Y Patil Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences and Research, Pimpri, Pune. He is the recipient of J P Singh Gold Medal Award and Husaini Dangiwala Gold Medal Award for his first merit at Yam Pharm. from nagpur university he has around 22 years of professional experience and he has published more than 80 research paper in national and international journals he had published four books and 12 monographs in a reference book and he had five five patents he is a full pg and phd guide of sanjeev bai phule pune university he has guided 55 post graduate students and six phd students under his guidance of uh, in different areas in the research he has received the research grant of 95 lakh rupees from aict gst and sanjeev bai phule pune university for his research project he is also associated with various professional bodies presently he is associate secretary of aptr He is chairman BOS of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, Sanjeev Bai Phule Pune University. He is a member academic council of Sanjeev Bai Phule Pune University, and he has uh, attained much more positions related with the pharmaceutical uh, edu education. Under his leadership, Dr. D Y Patil Pharmacy, Pimpri, had accredited by NAC A grade with 3.29 CGPA. He had got a uh, MBA for a period of six years, and the institute is also accredited with ISO. The institute is ranked in top 50 colleges in India by NIRF for last four years. Uh, he had received uh, various awards for the like uh, the best college award by Sanjeev Bai Phule Pune University in the professional category for the year 2017-18. He had received the best principal award 2018 by Savitri Bai Phule Pune University. So I am very happy to welcome you, sir, at our, at our college. And uh, I will uh, next I will request Professor Moore sir to continue with the session. Thank you, thank you, sir. Now I would like to request Dr. Swan Chitlangi, sir, to guide us. Please, sir, we are eagerly waiting for your guidance. Very good morning to one and all. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. I'm audible. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, Dr. M J Chawan, Principal Amrut Vaini College of Pharmacy. Dr. S F Sayyed, Program Coordinator. Uh, Mr. Moore, uh, Sachin, who introduced me for the session. Speaker of the first session, Nirja uh, Bhangre, Senior Research Associate, Gilead Life Sciences, California. other speakers who joined for this activity faculty members of amrutwani college of pharmacy and my dear student participants from various institution at the outset let me thank dr mj uh, mj chawan sir principal of the institute for inviting me as a chief guest and giving me an opportunity to inaugurate this national level student development program and interact with all of you on this occasion 
this is an excellent initiative or, uh, by your institute with the objective to update the knowledge of student through the interaction with experts and researcher for their professional growth i have seen the program schedule uh, the brochure i have seen and it is a well planned power pack programs there are total 14 sessions covering many areas there is a session on the opportunity for higher education the first session itself that is road map to the career in usa and nowadays more and more students are exploring this option for better opportunities outside india at the early stage of their career the session also the schedule also include the session on the product development uh, more specifically uh, biotechnological product that is vaccine uh, antibodies antibiotics recombinant proteins etc and during during this covid pandemic uh, it is the vaccine which played important role in saving human lives so no need to introduce about this thing uh, we all know vaccine development is not an easy process it takes lot of efforts time and it is a complex process however our scientists overcame all these hurdles and came up with the life saving saving vaccine with the support from the regulators recently who has recommended vaccine for malaria also and these development are leading to more and more opportunities for the young graduates provided they groom themselves and acquire in depth knowledge of the field the program also has sessions on quality management quality by design technology transfer regulatory affairs clinical research and clinical trials again this clinical research and clinical trials is one of the emerging area lot of opportunities for the pharmacy graduates in this area provided they should acquire the knowledge and training in clinical domain so they should go and work in the hospitals wherever the live clinical trials are going and that knowledge they should uh, acquire because as a pharmacist we know more about the pre clinical part we are more involved in the pre clinical activities but if we want to progress and if we want to develop ourselves in this particular area then we should have the training in the hospitals on that clinical aspect the program also is having session on the supply chain management during this pandemic time we have seen the importance of supply of vaccine medicine oxygen mask gloves pp kits to the different parts of the world and the challenges faced faced by the medico pharmacies and the patient in respect of the same the ultimate aim of education is to make student employable either working for somebody else or in, uh, in uh, or a self employed person and the organizers have taken due care by including topics like opportunities and recruitment process and industry expectations from the pharmacy graduates uh, government is working on skill india mission and we all know how important it is to have unique saleable skill to grab the opportunities the covid pandemic presented to the world several unprecedented challenges however those challenges have given rise to the opportunity that has resulted in an upsurge in the healthcare sector the pharma industry is currently evolving under these rapidly changing circumstances with the major pharma giants and mnc's focusing their time and energy in the implementation of high tech technologies and investment in research and development activities for several decade the pharma industry has traditionally been slow in the adoption of technology however this pandemic has forced the industry to move from the present setting and undergo a massive revamp with adoption of high end technologies that is 4.0 industry technologies which include artificial intelligence that is ai machine learning cloud technology additive manufacturing blockchain and many more and i am sure organizing such type of student development program will definitely help our budding pharmacies to raise their expertise as per the industry requirement and will help them in achieving greater heights in future so getting 14 experts on a one platform from a different domain is really a difficult task but i must appreciate the uh, team uh, like you the expert which are being selected are from different domain and i am sure all your students all the students who are attending this particular program will be immensely benefited and uh, see the organizer the institute has taken efforts uh, the faculty members have taken efforts now but it is up to the student how much advantage they take of all these activities like this sessions will be for one hour 
uh, extended for 14 weeks. But in between, they are getting time to think about this particular topic. Now, today, if there is a session on roadmap to USA, and those who wants to go to USA or any other country for higher education, so one week they should think on this topic. So if the student want to take a maximum out of this particular activity, there are four important points which I want to highlight, which they should think about, and that will help them to achieve the better output of this particular activity. The first important thing the student should know, they should visualize their, they should know their goal, what exactly they want to do. So like whether they want to go for higher study, whether they want to go for job, in job, whether where they want to go, they want to go for production, they want to go for marketing, they want to go wherever they want to go. So their goal should be fixed and that goal they should visualize, they should see themselves to that particular level. So if you, you want to achieve something in your life, you should see yourself 10 years ahead or 20 years ahead, what will be your future, where you will be. So the first thing is visualize yourself in your goal. Second is work on the weaknesses to make it strength. Now, almost, I think there are B farm students, maybe M farm students also will be attending this particular development program. So in last three years, four years, you got the domain knowledge, pharmacy knowledge, but there may be some areas which are weak. You are weak in those particular area. So this is a time you need to focus on those weaknesses and you need to work on those particular weaknesses and then only you can achieve a certain level, certain height in the professional career. Then the third point, which is important for the student is at this point is to concentrate. Avoid distraction. A lot of distraction is there. Not only I'm talking about the social media distraction. Generally, students are distracted. What my colleague is doing, what my friend is doing. You now somebody is going for marketing. So I also want to go for marketing or someone is going for a USA for higher studies. I also would want to go for you uh, go, go, want to go to USA for higher studies. That should not be the case. What is your passion? What is your expectation? What is your, you, wherever you are good, you want to pursue that career. You choose that particular career. You concentrate for that and try to achieve that particular in your life. And the fourth important point is in this process, accept failures and move on. Like in last four years of your graduation, three and a half year of your graduation, if suppose you are weak in some of the subjects, you have a fear of that particular subject. So I don't like chemistry. So I don't have a future in chemistry like that. What is it? This is just an example I'm sharing. So don't be afraid of failures, even in professional career also. Like once you select something and if you fail in that particular thing, that is okay. Let us go ahead and just uh, try and explore new options and try to achieve more and more hype. I am sure all these 14 sessions will open up different ideas, avenues for all of you. There are uh, very good sessions planned. Once again, I congratulate the organizers for uh, planning this particular activity for, from students' point of view, because many times we, uh, we have a lot of seminars, workshops, faculty development program, but the student is not the focus. The focus is the faculty development or in a two days, we conduct some seven, eight, 10 sessions and we, we try to bombard the participants with n number of different topics. But here it is very well planned and I must appreciate the contribution of the alumni of the institute. I'm really impressed because uh, yesterday when Sir Chawan Sir uh, sent me that information browser and I saw that all the 14 are alumni of the institute. That is what the alumni contribution is required. And I appreciate at this level the alumni contribution. No institution can grow without the contributions of the stakeholder. And alumni are one of the major stakeholder of the institution. They are the brand ambassador of the institution. And they actually need to impart what they got through their professional life. And that's what you all are doing. So I really congratulate all of you and thank you for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to talk to all of you. Thank you. And I wish all the best to this particular program. Again, Dr. Chawan, sir, thank you so much. And all your coordinators, uh, it's great work. And I wish all the best for this particular activity. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for uh, your best wishes, your motivating words, motivating the for the motivation to participants.
your precious presence and words really took this program to a higher value thank you very much sir for your auspicious presence thanks a lot on behalf of amrit wine institute of uh, amrit wine college of pharmacy and respected principal thanks a lot sir yeah my pleasure uh also we have with us mr santosh busba and mr jalinder sagar we all welcome you both on this auspicious occasion and we are waiting to know from you also in future as it is planned in our sessions welcome you both now it's time to introduce our first speaker for the national level student development program i would like to request our student gurmit kaur punjabi to introduce ms nirja pangre please gurmit good morning everyone present here it is a great pleasure to welcome such a noted personality nirja bhangre ma'am as a great guest of honor for today's program so on the behalf of avcop let me please introduce you ma'am nirja bhangre ma'am is awarded ms biotechnology from university of texas usa in 2011-13 in 2006 to 2010 she completed her b farm from avcop she also completed data science certifications from ibm cognitive classes ma'am is an analytical researcher with 7 plus years of extensive molecular biology lab experience she has hands on experience with establishing cell based assays drug treatment assays si shkd experiments dna rna extraction pcr and antibody optimizations Currently, she is working at Galliard Sciences, Foster City, California. She developed and executed a new assay on a challenging cell line to predict target exposures of novel therapeutics against non-alcoholic non steatohepatitis (NASH) and other fibrotic diseases. Currently, she is optimizing and troubleshooting for new potential plasma PD markers. In June. in june 2018 to august 2018 she worked as laboratory manager at stanford university california in april 2014 to june 2018 she worked as senior research assistant at md anderson cancer center austin texas ma'am successfully generated transgenic murine lines for modeling cancer through strategic breeding schema and genotyping routine She was research technician at UT Southwestern Medical Center Dallas Texas in August 2013 to April 2014 and contributed to obesity and fertility studies in mice Ma'am has research intern experience under Dr James Amatruda at UT UT Southwestern Medical Center Dallas Texas Once again on behalf of entire AVCOP family I would like to extend a warm, fraternal, and hearty welcome to you, Ms. Nirza Bhangre, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can stop calling me, ma'am. <laughs> uh, there's no need to be so formal. Um, so let me share my screen with you guys. It says I cannot share my uh, screen. Yeah, I will give you. Now you can share yours. Please try one time. Yeah, it's visible. All right. So, uh, to start off, thank you so much for having me here, guys. Uh, this is the first time officially that I'm speaking to anyone back home, uh, to my alma mater. Uh, so, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, it's been about ten years, so you might notice that I speak English in a different way. <laughs> but like, but do understand that it's been ten years now. Um, this talk it's meant to be an open chat, uh, so please feel free to stop me at any point, ask me tons of questions. Uh, I haven't prepared so many slides, so you're supposed to ask me tons of questions. Okay. So um, as Gurneet has already, she went through all of this. So after I graduated from uh, Amrit Wine College of Pharmacy, I came to US and I was pursuing my master's uh, in University of Texas at Dallas in biotechnology. While I was doing that, um, 
I was also working at UT Southwestern and I was lucky enough to get uh, paid internships uh, in the summer of 2012. Um, and then the second internship I got was in the spring of 2013. Uh, so what I learned here is basically uh, basic molecular biology uh, techniques. And we did a lot of disease modeling in zebrafish for pediatric germ cell cancer. Uh, so I learned zebrafish husbandry and how to use zebrafish basically for uh, your research. Um, so then I graduated with my master's in 2013, um, with, in 2013, August of 2013. Uh, because of this experience as an uh, intern in UT Southwestern, I was able to get uh, a job uh, before I graduated at UT Southwestern Dallas uh, as a research technician three. Um, and this was an entry level job and this was in a different lab. Uh, and I was totally fine at the time with this job. Uh, but here I got to learn a lot of um, mouse work. Basically I started working with mice. Uh, when you get in research, you will know that mice is the preferred uh, lower species that you, uh, you can work on to advance your research. So we worked on diabetes and obesity related studies uh, here. Uh, then soon after, uh, in a few months or so, I started looking for another job because I knew that I have to progress. Uh, so I landed another job at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas as research assistant too. Uh, the, and this was essentially a two level jump promotion uh, when I did that. Uh, so this was a fantastic opportunity in Houston. So I took it. Um, and again, here I built on the same techniques that I, uh, that I learned uh, in, back in Dallas. So I did a lot of in vivo mouse work and basically the bulk of my work was to produce a tissue specific gene knockout. So we were interested in one particular gene and we wanted to study its role in um, cancer settings. So we wanted to overexpress it, we wanted to knock it out, and then we wanted to see how it, uh, it is making a difference in uh, developmental biology. So, uh, and then when we did the gene specific knockouts, it was we targeted pancreas, skin, uh, uh, breasts, lung, uh, prostate. So basically we were studying the role of this gene in all these different tissues. Um, so, so work from this lab uh, generated, a, generated quite a few papers that I have in the next slide. Um, and then, yeah, after this, uh, so my move from Texas to California was actually when I got married and I married my husband and then I moved to California and then I joined, I actually joined Stanford. And when Dr. Chitalange sir was saying that you have to be able to embrace when something doesn't work out. So I joined Stanford, I joined it as a lab manager and it, I haven't written it here because it was only two months, right? So it, it doesn't really count for me. Uh, so that job opportunity was not exactly the right fit uh, uh, for me, for my career, where I wanted to be, where I, where I wanted to head. So I actually quit that job. And it was a scary time because uh, you don't just quit your job, right? You have a job, you stick to it until you find your next job. So you don't really quit your job. That's not really an option in US. But since I was married, I thought I could take the risk. If I didn't like the job, I was like, okay, you know what? Screw it. I don't like this job. I'm going to quit this job. So I quit that job. And then in a few months, I actually got a better job. And this was, this was it. This was awesome because this was in Gilead Sciences uh, in headquarters. So Foster City is our headquarters uh, for Gilead Sciences. And this is a very core R&D job. Um, and I started as a research associate too, um, and I've been here ever since. Um, any questions? Yes, Nitra? Yes. Uh, the question is that uh, what motivated you to take the graduation master's in biotechnology? when you were studying in Amritwani College of Pharmacy. What was the trigger we want to know from? 
Yeah. So, uh, so when I was doing my bachelor's, uh, um, you know, in third year, we have the gate exam. And then in fourth year, we have the yes. gate exam. And I had prepared for the gate exam. And I was going to go for the gate exam. And then the day of the exam, the exam center was in Nasik. And I have been, I was saying this to my dad. I was like, I think I want to go to US. I think I want to explore my options in US. And he was like, okay. Uh, and the day of the exam, I was waiting for the driver to come in so he could drive me to Nasik. And the day of the exam, my dad comes and says, yeah, I canceled him. Uh, he's not coming. So you're not going. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Where is the driver? I have to go. And he goes like, well, if you give this exam, I know you're gonna you're gonna pass, you're gonna get it. And if you get it, I basically will not let you go to US to pursue your dream or whatever that is, right? So he basically, I'm like, why are you saying this now when I have prepared uh, and I'm ready to go for the exam? So he basically said, yeah, there's no need to, because if you do, uh, it will be hard for me to let you go. So that was that. So that's what he said. And I was like, okay, <laughs> which was very surprising because when I spoke to you guys, you were like, what, what happened? Why aren't you, why didn't you go for the exam? I remember that. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so since he gave me that push, he's like, yeah, go explore how to go to US. I was like, okay, sounds good. And I started exploring on what to do next. And nobody really knew a whole lot about it. So I have actually put together a few slides on how to, uh, so I can talk through some of that. Uh, one, yeah. one more question related to that from Vinit Kaur Jaspinder Singh. Uh, yeah. Are there any entrance exams for going to USA for higher studies? Any specific yeah. examination? Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Any specific examination? Ah, so, yeah, I do have slides on that. Uh, I will get I will get to it. So th these are the publications that came out of the academic labs where I was working. Uh, okay, I can skip that. So basically, yes, there are general uh, exams that you can um, you can give, which are basically GRE and TOEFL. Uh, most of you might know know of this. Uh, the trouble is that uh, that there's not a whole lot of guidance when it comes to which universities to apply, and people then generally don't know how how financially intensive it can get when you want to come to the US. So there's, uh, you have to recognize your position financially and you have to see if uh, there are any education loans that you can get uh, to do that. Um, I was fortunate in that sense that my dad had me covered so I didn't have to worry about that. But yeah, basically you have to qualify GRE and you have to give TOEFL which is your English language exam and apply to universities. Um, Yes, yes. You go through your presentation, Ms. Nirja, then we will continue. With yeah, the <laughs> I should have done that. Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, so what I do right now, this is a slide about what I'm working on right now. So I'm working on NAFLD NASH. Uh, NAFLD is basically non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, which leads to uh, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Uh, it's basically a uh, advanced aggressive manifestation of a bunch of metabolic syndromes like you have peripheral obesity, you have high blood pressure, uh, it can lead to deposition of fat in the liver. Uh, the, the liver cells, which are basically your hepatocytes, can balloon. Uh, balloon meaning they expand, they stretch, and when they stretch like that, they start depositing some collagen and that leads to fibrosis. When, you when it develops into fibrosis, um, basically that portion of your liver starts becoming non-functional and when it becomes non-functional, you, there are no clinical, there are no, there are no treatments on the market right now. So when it becomes non-functional, the only option is a liver transplant. And that's why it's, uh, it's an unmet clinical need. Uh, and that's why Gilead has a clinical stage program to, for that. Uh, so where my role, 
uh, specifically is to um, is to develop. I, I developed and validated uh, in vitro cell line based assay in an endogenous system for uh, human dose projections. Uh, endogenous meaning the mo you have to pick the most relevant human system uh, to model your disease and then to pick then to screen the molecules that you have in the pipeline uh, to come up with human dose projections. Um, and then the other thing that I'm working on is also functional assays to understand the role of protein binding um, on the EC50s. Um, and if you guys are not understanding any of this, any or some of this, please don't get overwhelmed. Uh, when you this is very, very disease specific area. So uh, you'll get to know all of this when you uh, when you progress. Um, so what I love about my role is that it's clinical stage role. Uh, right now we're screening molecules. Uh, we are literally, we keep saying we are literally one molecule, not even molecule, we are literally one atom away from that clinical molecule. And we are targeting an IND filing the DFDA for the next year. So fingers crossed, we will soon have a molecule for next year. Um, and being a part of corporate R&D in Gilead, we enjoy a lot of freedom, a lot of financial freedom, a lot of time freedom. Uh, and that's just a great position to be in. So yeah, I was gonna get to the slide. Uh, so this, so a little bit of good news and bad news for you guys that all the career paths to US basically come from further studies. Because I know most of most or all of you ha are doing bachelors of pharmacy, and I haven't come across anyone or who has been hired directly from India. Uh, it's been 10 years in the US, and I haven't come across anybody who was hired directly from US uh, or directly from India to come to US. Uh, so when I came here in US, uh, I wanted to see if I could be a licensed pharmacist, right? Uh, what it means to be a licensed pharmacist in US is that you can be behind the counter uh, dispensing medicines to the patients and advising them on how to take them, right? So uh, to do that, you have to have your license, license in pharmacy. Um, so I wanted to see what can I do to get my license? And then I realized that you have to pass an exam called FPGEE, which is basically foreign pharmacy graduate examination, right? So where, uh, but uh, NABP, the National Association Board of Pharmacy has set a qualifying criteria for that. So basically if you have graduated uh, uh, with a pharmacy degree after Jan 2013, you must have a five-year uh, pharmacy curriculum at the time of graduation to give to, to be qualified for this examination. Uh, and since I had a four years bachelor's of pharmacy, that did not count. So I, um, I actually uh, had a lot of correspondence with this, uh, with, with, the, with the board who conducts these exams and I was exploring um, if there's any way I could bring up my qualification levels to account for that uh, for that five-year course. And there was actually nothing that they could tell or I could do to qualify that. And I know for a fact that even a diploma plus a B-farm uh, together does not count towards this five-year curriculum. You have to have a five-year, single five-year degree to to, uh, to qualify this uh, basic criteria set forth by NADP. And, that's, and then you can give this exam. And if you pass the exam, then you can get your license in pharmacy, right? Um, Means, uh, sorry to interrupt, Mirja. Yeah. Means uh, if any candidate students is doing BFARM from India, then yeah. if he or she want to become a registered pharmacist there in the US, and have to mm. continue with the job, he or she should pass this FPGE exam, is it? Yeah, so basically they need a five-year degree. That's what I was trying to evaluate. Uh, that's what I was trying to uh, evaluate while I was doing my master's, uh, that if, could I get the license licensing done? Could I 
could I go for this exam? And after a lot of headbutting against the board of pharmacy, the answer was no. Uh, there's no way to go around it. You have to have a five-year, minimum of five-year pharmacy curriculum at the time of graduation. Um, and this was a big bummer. If I had known this, that you need a five-year degree instead of a four-year, I would have gone for a PharmD instead of a B-Pharm. So this was a big eye-opener for me. Um, Miss, whatever well, the degrees the students are getting here, that mm -hmm. one year or two year, that is not of use. Is it the meaning? Kind of, sort of, yes. That is the gist. So I I, I I am aware of this for a fact because almost at the time when I graduated, the, the, in Nasik, there was a college that came out with a Busbal College, I think, uh, that came out with a PharmD program. And it was a brand new college and they have a PharmD program. And, and I was looking into it. I was like, how is this different from what, what we did, which is Bachelor's of Pharmacy? And that's when I figured out, oh, it's a five-year program instead of a four-year program. And we didn't have options back then, right? We didn't know about this. We didn't. Uh, so it was, it was just lack of knowledge, actually. Okay. In connection to this uh, this question, so many students and Mr. Jalinder Sagar is also asking, what is mm -hmm. the status and scope of pharmacy in US in comparison to India? So I know that uh, the pharmacy education in India uh, tends to be really geared towards manufacturing and formulations uh, and, uh, and such. But now that I work in industry, finally, uh, I'm seeing that it's very core sciences focused. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that. So you can see what I mean. But the bulk of it is that the education, the, the curriculum set forth by University of Pune is actually very manufacturing and formulations and you know how pharmacy came to be pharmacy. Uh, uh, so yeah, and I actually looked at the curriculum for PharmD to see what I learned, how is it different from what these people are learning in PharmD, right? So I compared curriculum uh, of University of Houston, uh, which has a PharmD program. And I was trying to get them to evaluate uh, my transcripts and to match it to their curriculum and see what kind of knowledge gaps are there? What, if there are any courses that I could do? And when I went through it, <coughs> I was like, this is vastly different. This is completely different from what we study. So uh, I'd be happy to share some of that curriculum with you guys. Uh, it's open source. You can also pull it up. Uh, but it's very different. Um, here, the focus is hospital pharmacy, like licensing for pharmacy. That's what they do. So you study a lot of uh, pharmacology and stuff like that. Uh, and you don't study a whole lot of pharmaceutics, pharmacology, uh, and stuff like that. And chemistry is a whole beast of its own. Um, so that requires higher education. <laughs> one more question so, is, uh, yes, one more question is there. Which are the best yeah. courses abroad after B pharmacy completion in India? Uh, so, so like I did, I did biotechnology. Uh, biotechnology, if majorly it was molecular biology, then you have pharmacology. Uh, you can also get in directly into chemistry. Um, okay, I will get to some of that in my slides next. Uh, yes. So I'll yes. just go through this and yes. then we'll talk about that. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so this is one path, which is PharmD, uh, which does not seem to be a viable option for most of you guys. And then this is what I did basically, which is master's. Uh, it, master's takes about two years. Uh, you need to pass GRE with good scores. You need to pass TOEFL. Uh, you need to apply to universities. And this, this part can, can be hard for some people. And I wanna say that there are lots of consultation agencies in India which guide you to US or 
guide you in up in the application process to us i would take whatever they say with a grain of salt because most of these consulting uh, firms or agencies uh, most of their clientele tends to be engineering focused so they don't really know uh, the kinds of universities or the studies or curriculum that pharmacists are interested in and where they could get direct placements or where they are in proximity of companies so that they, they are able to land that next job uh, easily instead of having to struggle um, for a few months and then getting that job, right? So I would, I would definitely do uh, complete homework when you apply to universities on your own. And I, I wouldn't take a whole lot of advice from those people because I know I went through someone like that. Uh, they were based out of Pune. I don't want to take any names, but they did not guide me well. Uh, but does it didn't matter. I, I'm where I am. Uh, I, I came out fine, but not everybody could come out fine, right? Um, so yes, uh, this can be really financially intensive. And I would like you to know that you may get full scholarships or you may get partial scholarships, which basically waive your tuition fees. Uh, tuition fees can be, uh, back when I did it, it was about $11,000 per semester. And it is four semesters of, for the duration of the course. So it's about, it was about $44,000. Uh, when I did it, but you can get full to partial scholarships, which will basically leave half or full of your tuition fees. And then you can get there in universities, there are tons of part time jobs uh, that one can easily find. Um, and these jobs can help a lot with your living expenses. So you don't have to ask for money from back home uh, for your living expenses. Okay. Um, and the cheaper and the longer option is PhD, okay? Uh, so PhD, uh, the way to think about PhD is that you need a long-term commitment and you need tons of time and dedication and you, you need to have that passion to go for your PhD. And contrary to what one might think, you can start, you can come for your PhD as soon as you're out of your bachelor's. You don't need to do masters. That masters will not count. So a PhD is a standalone PhD. Your time will not give, get waived or you will not be able to do your PhD in say three years. Because you might think, oh, I have a master's. I should be able to cut time on my PhD and I want to do it in three years. No, you cannot do it in three years. Uh, most good universities will need you uh, at least for five years um, working on your thesis uh, for your PhD. And some might even go longer, uh, but trust me, more often than not, this is the best path uh, forward uh, when you, so think about PhD seriously, because PhD does not cost you any money out of pocket. So when you apply for PhD, if you're a good student, you'll get picked right out. And when you get picked, basically you don't have any tuition fees. You will get a research or a teaching assistantship with the professor or under the university. Um, and you will not have any tuition fees. Uh, the research assistantship the, or the TA ship will basically pay you uh, money to cover your living expenses. Uh, so, you can be self-sufficient. You, you don't need to ask for any money from back home or you don't need to have any education loan if you're considering PhD. Uh, it is a longer path. And after you complete your PhD, you may get hired directly in a startup or in industry. It, <coughs> it, It ten, it's it's a rare and lucky thing if you do get hired, uh, but I think you can get hired in a startup or a small industry. More often than not, uh, people who do PhDs go for postdoc fellowship, which is another rotation uh, in a second lab, uh, which tends to be about three years. And the goal here is to get unique uh, publication on a new disease area or do something novel and get 
get publications out in a high impact journal um, and become a master in your own little field. Uh, and that will get you a job in either academia or in a startup or industry. The goal generally tends to be the industry, which is the big pharma. So your ultimate goal has to be, yeah, you want to land in corporate big pharma industry because that's where you will make the most money, right? So yeah, like I said, it's the longest path, but this is the most sustainable path for a full and satisfying career for your future. Any questions on that? Yes, uh, yes we are. As we are just, uh, we are uh, talking about the uh, career options with the degrees. The one question from Shruti Morankar is there: Can okay. you opt for MD after Farm B? Opt for what? MD, MD, after Farm B. MD, D for yes, dog. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Can you expand on that? MD, as in doctor. I, medicine doctorate of medicine whether it term in context to this topic but uh, i think that same meaning will be there md doctor so right? i know. doctorate of medicine i think so no you can get md if you're a doctor since we are not doctors we cannot get md after <laughs> farm D. that's farm d right after uh, farm d after and farm d no no, no. Yes. no. Uh, then, one more question is there. Uh, actually, it is uh, regarding the US FDA industry related. So, okay. the question is that from 2012 to till date, US FDA has issued more than 50 warning letters to Indian or mm. Indian as well as MNC companies. Is there any changes in US FDA? Would like to focus uh, on this. So, I personally don't deal with MD, FDA, so I'm not okay. in regulatory affairs, so I, I wouldn't be able to tell you okay. anything like that. But things do change in FDA. There are always political agendas in FDA that we, at a higher level, that you will get to understand. But yeah, as a general comment, I will not be able to comment on. Uh, yeah, the letters that FDA has issued. I will take you somewhat back and I will ask you, uh, you have completed your MS in biotechnology. Yes, that yeah. a proud thing. But what was your experience while admitting and studying in the University of Texas, one of the reputed university? So uh, University of Texas at Dallas, it's a good university, uh, but in the best, the good thing about University of Texas at Dallas is that it's proximity to UT Southwestern, which tends to have all the research centric lab. So when you're picking your university, you want to see what kind of publications are coming out of that university. So you want to go to PubMed or whatever, and you want to look at the individual professors from that department and see what kind of research they have. You also want to see what kind of funding they have. You want to see that they have some kind of R01. R01 is basically an NIH grant for like a million dollars or so for five years. So when they have these big grants, you know that they have funding because nobody is, nobody is really happy and proud to say that, yeah, we don't have funding. Uh, nobody will tell you that. You have to do your own research to see if they have funding or not. Only when they have funding, they will have the money and the time. And so it, it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. You have expertise, you develop some research, you publish it, you apply to NIH, you will get some grants. When you get grants, you have to work on them to produce some results to ask for more money. You cannot just ask for money. You have to produce results to ask for more money. So. Uh, when you pick your universities, you have to make sure that they have some in-house research, quality research going on. And if they don't, uh, like UT Southwestern, uh, sorry, like UT Te uh, University of Texas at Dallas, where I did my master's, uh, they did not have a whole lot of research going on in-house, but they were next to UT Southwestern. 
which is a big hospital and a research center, which has tons of uh, research going on. And that's how I was able to do two paid internships. And that's where I gained all my experience. So the schedule used to be, you go to school, you do your classes, then in the afternoon, you go to UT Southwestern and you do your research. Um, And the professors uh, or wherever you're doing your internships, they are really flexible and really cool people that uh, this is the best part about doing research. You have tons of flexibility. People understand that you have busy lives, you have busy schedules. So it's not a nine to five expectation that, yeah, you need to be in at 9 a.m. and then you have to be out of like you. It's nothing like that. You go in, you go in, you go in, you do your work, you get out. So if you're able to do your work in half an hour, good for you. You get the day off, right? Um, It's like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, So disciplines. Um, So this is my perspective on how how I'm seeing things are being looked at in Gilead and so far. So in orange, you have your core sciences, you have molecular biology, chemistry, uh, hospital pharmacy, DMPK, and formulation sciences. Now, you know, uh, most of these, these are generally bent into these bigger categories, like formulation sciences is basically your pharmaceutics, right? DMPK, you know what DMPK is. And then in black here is uh, the interdisciplinary fields, which is informatics. Informatics, again, is all infant passing, which is uh, health informatics, medical informatics. You have bioinformatics. Then you have intellectual property and licensing. Uh, You also have non-clinical safety and toxicology and regulatory affairs. And then the new hip word is data sciences. Data sciences is, has its fingers in everything that you do. Uh, so that there's one thing. Uh, so uh, these are these tend to stand out differently uh, because when you are considering your career in these interdiscipl- interdisciplinary fields, basically you'll see that you will work with people who are not pharmacy graduates. So basically you will have competition from all these people, like for example, in IP and licensing, people come to IP and licensing from after their law degree. So you are competing for that job with someone who has law degree, who knows more about uh, the laws than you. You will have, uh, so, so these are not necessarily the fields that you have an edge over the next candidate. So this is your core field where you will have the most edge or an advantage uh, when it comes to the next candidate, right? So any questions on that? Raul, sir? Yes. Raul, sir, you can ask your question, please. Yeah. Anyway, nice to see you. Just uh, I would like to ask you one thing uh, about a paid internship. What sort, sort of it is? And uh, who student can do that? Uh, so again, uh, in US, you have to work for you. Uh, nobody's going to bring it for you. Uh, you have to go and apply. So the way I went about that was I did my research on PubMed. I did my research on NIH. And I saw who has got money. Uh, you don't just go and knocking doors, right? If you want something, you don't just knock on random doors. You have to know if they are in a position to give you something, right? So I found out that in UT Southwestern, these are the professors who have who have money. um, And then these are the professors doing this kind of research. Am I interested in that research? Uh, Do I want to do I want to pursue anything uh, which is remotely related to what they're doing? Uh, And if the answer is yes, then you go and send them an email. Uh, I tell them that, hey, you're so-and-so, just send them a resume and send them why you are interested in doing what you're in pursuing an internship. The way I got my first internship, it was not posted anywhere. There was no job. There was no uh, job opening or anything. I just send a cold email to someone that I thought that is cool and is doing some nice science. And I send them an email and I ask, say, hey, uh, you're doing some cool work. Uh, this is what I'm doing. This is where I want to be. Uh, can you give me some time? Could, could I talk to you? And they said, yes. 
come right in. And I went and I talked. We just had a general conversation and then it turned into an interview. And he was like, he had, he was a really old uh, MD, PhD from UK who had a big lab in UT Southwestern. And he had lots of money and he was, he was, uh, he never had uh, students in his lab. So he was like, yeah, I don't know why people don't ask me often enough, because if they did, I would say yes, because I would want to teach someone. So you have to just ask yeah, what's the worst that yeah. can happen. <laughs> yeah. They'll say no. Well, you might get 10 no's, but you might get one yes, right? So you just have to ask. Yeah. The same thing happened with the second internship. I just co- I just sent a cold email to someone. I was like, hey, you're doing some cool work. Uh, can I come and talk to you guys? And they said, yes, <laughs> come on in. And I was like, awesome. And I went and I, it turned into an interview. A uh, bunch of people talked to me. And basically they were like, yeah, we're doing this. Do you want to help with this? Uh, do you have any experience in this? And I was like, yeah, I did a little bit. I, I did a little bit of work in Dr. So-and-so's lab. So I, I learned how to do this so I could do that. And then you basically just have to ask, hey, you, are you doing something new today? Can I watch you? And you just watch them. You watch and learn uh, and they'll let you learn. Um, so the way it works in US is just that you have to ask and things will work out for you. Yeah, really exciting yeah. to see you like, learn this. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So just one more, more question is there. Yes. Uh, you are you have been working as analytical researchers, researchers yes. with seven plus years of extensive molecular biology lab experience. So what type of education background will be compatible for this analytical researcher job in the US? So that will guide yeah. the students. Yeah, so it's basically what I did, right? I did pharmacy and I did master's in biotechnology and I gathered all this experience by doing these internships. And then eventually it doesn't just happen one day, right? That you become an analytical researcher. Through all of this experience, you gain so much knowledge that that when you are in a good position, you have had so many years of experience and you can comfortably say that, yes, I have this experience. Nobody needs to teach me anything standing right next to me. If you, you just have to say what needs to be done and it's my job to go and figure out how to do that. So you get to that point when you have so much experience, right? Okay. In relation to that only, uh, see, we, uh, we are here virtually meeting and so many people, industry persons, alumni are also there. So how will you compare the role of analytical researcher here in India and in the US? In, in context to... In, in connection to the facilities, the type of work, the grants, all everything. Ah. So since I have never worked in India, I would not know. I, yes. I'm not the best person to ask that question. But, but you able. can you can tell about your experience in that lab. What type of facilities, <laughs> equipments? So yeah, so. I, I'll, I'll go over that here. So when I was working in labs, it was basically academia, right? In academia, uh, you are limited by the funding um, and there's a set amount of money and then they will have some equipments, some basic science equipments like PCR machines, some Western blood equipments. Um, and these are some of, some of the really basic, but you can do a lot with just with a PCR machine and a Western blot. Uh, you don't need much. You just purchase some antibodies. You just check for overexpression, underexpression, and you, you can start from there. Then there are core labs uh, in the academia where you can submit your samples to get some extra work done. Uh, so with basic instruments, you can do some good research. So that tends to be a good starting point for most academic labs. Uh, and that's why, it, 
So it's a lot of grunt work and that's why it tends to be easy entry. So entry into academic lab is really easy as a student because you are willing since you want to learn, uh, you go and mo mostly like more often than not, people just go and volunteer. So I was the first one to get a paid internship in my field, in my class. So that happened for the first time. Uh, all my friends, unfortunately, had unpaid internships. Um, and then one of them got a paid internship, but they picked such a niche field that they narrowed their focus so early on that they struggled later on. Uh, and I'll talk about that when we get to the next slides. Um, so yeah, academic research can be stressful because there's, there's little money uh, and there's tons of pressure to produce results from your basic, basic techniques. Uh, but you will get to learn a lot uh, via internships um, and just by talk, yeah, just by attending uh, seminars um, and yeah, just get your hands dirty in the lab and you, you learn a lot. That's how I learned. And Nericha, Sarosa sir, have one question relevant to academia. What is your yeah. opinion about uh, education system in India and USA? Uh, so in India, uh, things, things are a little bit um, different, right? In pharmacy, things are pretty different. Like I was talking about curriculum, the curriculum that University of Pune has set it's forth is really... Sorry? Yes, you can continue. Continue. Um, so the curriculum that is set forth by University of Pharmacy, like I said, it, it is really different than the curriculum set forth by US universities. Um, but the different thing about uh, US universities is that um, every university doesn't really follow the same uh, scripted curriculum. Uh, for example, master's in biotechnology program is not the same as masters in bio, in U, for example, compare UT Dallas and then compare uh, University of New York. So this program of masters of biotechnology in New York and Texas is not the same. You have to do your own homework to see what aligns or what is it that interests you the most. Uh, so when I did you, uh, when I did my master's, they had four core courses. Uh, it was bioinformatics, genomics. Um, uh, I forget. Uh, I think molecular biology and healthcare informatics, if I remember correctly. So you have to go off of that, and then you have your elective courses. So you have to do your core courses. Uh, there is no way out of that. And then you have your elective courses. And that's where you can customize your curriculum to what you want to do, right? And then again, even the core courses can be different from one university to the next university. So uh, you have to do your due diligence on everything. Again, one more question is from Harshal Naule. Is there any difference between doing EMS in uh, EMS biotechnology abroad and uh, in India, do you found yes. some practical differences? So since I again, since I've not done a master's in yeah. India, yeah. I, I wouldn't know. I can only talk about what I have, what my experience has been in US. Uh, but just going off of comparing curriculums, I would say it's very different. Yeah, continue, continue your slides. Okay, uh, so so that's academia. Uh, then there's startups. Startups is when some cool postdoc or cool PhD graduate, uh, they have some awesome ideas from their academic labs, uh, and and they want to do some get some money out of that. So they go and find a venture capitalist who can fund their research, and they form a little startup biotech. So since I'm in California, Silicon Valley, it's the it's 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 like the mecca it's like the mecca medina for for all the startups right so that's what they do there are startups uh, around every corner uh, we go out and there are startups around every corner it's filled with companies uh, so in startups the benefit is that you get to do a lot of hands on work there will be lots of opportunities 
the pay will be better than academia. Uh, you just have to be really hardworking. Um, so if you get an opportunity to join a startup, I would say it's awesome. And just to get your foot in the door, because uh, that's startups are pharma adjacent. So if you uh, start here, you can get here, right? So, so that's startups. And then you have your big pharma. You have, uh, there's a corporate culture. And the best part about working for big pharma is that they have uh, planned uh, disease or therapeutic areas where they want to drive some research. So they will really put in a lot of money uh, so that you can produce some druggable targets for them uh, and chemistry will generate chemical matter for them. Um, so yeah, more often than not, this is the best uh, place to be as a pharmacist. And it tends to be the most lucrative in terms of money. Uh, so yeah. Careers in big pharmacy, uh, big pharma companies are good. Um, but again, this arrow is meant to show that whatever you learn here in academia, you can you can use the same techniques you learned here in big pharma. So nothing goes to waste. Just invest in yourself, take your time, and really hone in on the skills, right? Uh, I have a little bit of a dive into biology, but basically what I've written here in the interest of time is that develop some transferable skill set. Uh, if you like biology, then I would say uh, learn some of the basic things like cell culture, how to do a PCR, how to do a qPCR, right? How to construct plasmids, how to do transfections, transductions, uh, protein RNA purifications, Western blots, uh, flow-based sorting and microscopy imaging. And these techniques will basically get you far. Uh, if you like biology, then you should learn these techniques because these will be applicable no matter what disease area you pick. You pick inflammation, cancer, immunology, you will use one or more of these and if you have this under your belt, uh, it will at least get you an interview, right? Uh, and yeah, so you don't have to pick a disease area that you don't want to, you don't need to say that, yeah, I love uh, somebody in my family got cancer, so I, I'm going to pursue a career in cancer. You don't have to say that early on. Uh, the job market will often uh, guide those decisions for you. All you have to do is get develop some basic transferable skill set so that you can you can get that first job, right? And the best part about biology is that you can always hit refresh and there is always new biology to discover, uh, always new off-target, on-target biology to discover. If you get bored with one disease, you want to learn something new, you can just switch your disease or therapeutic area. And again, the skills that you have with you uh, are always transferable. Uh, chemistry. So we work with, uh, in our team, we have chemists uh, who are basically making uh, those fine tune uh, changes to one atom at a time. And basically they develop the chemical matter that I am screening in biology. Um, so it's really cool to be in a position to work with them. Uh, so from what I have seen so far uh, in chemistry, you don't always need a postdoc after your PhD. So you don't always need your, need uh, a, a, high a higher education, which can basically be eight years after your bachelor's. So uh, just a PhD can suffice. Sometimes even a master's can suffice. Uh, so you can do it in different fields. You have medicinal chemistry, structural chemistry. And there's computational biology, protein engineering. These are kind of sort of in the same bucket as structural chemistry. And then there's analytical chemistry. Uh, careers in chemistry tend to be sustainable and there always seems to be a path forward. Uh, it's always exciting. So to me, as a biologist, grass does seem to be greener on the other side in terms of time invested and a sustainable career, right? Uh, then DMPK, we all know what DMPK does, um, and this is what they do, and this, this, this is probably the bulk of what DMPK does, 
Uh, and this is just based off of small molecule therapeutics. Uh, so they do physiological physiology based uh, PK modeling. Uh, they study the hepatic uptake and clearance, uh, of physical properties of the drug, uh, its solubility, its stability. Uh, they, they also have to check permeability um, and bioavailability bio and how much drug is free when you give it, right? Because your drug has to be free. Uh, if it has to bind to your receptor. Uh, and they also have to check for DDI potentials. Uh, and with different uh, new therapeutic areas, like now the new therapeutic areas are like bispecific uh, antibodies. Uh, there are CAR T cells, cell-based therapies. So depending on the type of therapeutics, you have different uh, avenues for DMPK exploration. Uh, so whatever interests you, uh, I suggest you do look into that. And uh, lastly, I have some do's and don'ts for you guys. Uh, more often than not, you will hear a lot of do's uh, when it comes to career paths. Uh, so I'll give you two pieces of advice, which is invest in yourself. Uh, don't get bogged down by just uh, hearing that, no, I don't want to do more studies uh, just because you have finished your bachelor's. Be prepared to go for another degree, and that will always be a better payoff in your long term. So I strongly advise you to uh, do your due diligence uh, and pick a field that you love or you think that you will be good at. Um, and get that up next degree. Um, and a few don'ts, uh, just like Dr. Chitlangesar was saying, right? Uh, just because your friend or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, just because they are doing something, don't do it. Have your own thought process behind it, right? Why do you want to do master's in pharmacy? Like, why do you want m -Farm? Why do you want a PhD? Uh, don't just, don't be a copycat. Make your own path is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the other thing I would say is that don't narrow your focus early on because um, if you narrow your focus so early on, then you might be in trouble later on. So you wanna keep things broad and you wanna keep all your options open. So just pick a broad field and stick to it. <coughs> one, so, one, one question is asked by Rishikesh Veli, sir. Uh, yes. Can you elaborate on role of cell lines in the drug new drug discovery? Role of what? Role cell of lines. cell lines. Role of cell lines in cell new lines. drug discovery. Oh. oh, it's all driven by cell lines, right? Uh, you have KCO cell lines for hepatic clearance and uptake. You have MDCK, uh, the dog, dog kidney cells, basically, for hepatic clearance and uptake, right? Um, Bulk of the work, uh, first initial screening, all of it, uh, all your target biology, it gets validated first in vitro. Uh, you have to do your in vitro leg work before you can try your ideas in vivo, because in vivo work tends to be more expensive. Uh, so you have to produce results first in vitro, in vitro meaning your cell lines. You have to demonstrate your gene expression or say if you have a target and that is upregulated or downregulated, you have to pick a relevant cell line to demonstrate that on whatever RNA level or, or protein level. And uh, only then when you have good proof of concept data from in vitro studies, can you take your uh, study into an in vivo model, which can be a mouse or a rat. Uh, so yeah, it completely uh, revolves around cell lines. You have to be able to do cell culture. Nirija, two questions are there from student. Uh, yes. Venkatesh Patak is asking what what to do after B farm to go in US. And uh, second is relevant question from Akansha Nirmal. After M farm or before M farm, we have to pursue this field, or what do you suggest? Uh, so yeah, you could try what I did. Uh, you can you can come to US for masters, uh, and um, uh, so right after masters, I got a job. Uh, 
which was which is which is great, right? Uh, but if you have some financial considerations, say uh, you don't want to take that education loan, uh, it tends to, it is a lot of money. I understand that. Uh, so you have to evaluate on your own situation. If you don't have a lot of money but still would like to come to US and you do not want the burden of the education loan on you. I strongly suggest that you look into a PhD program because because you will be happy in the long run. Uh, you'll be happy that uh, somebody gave you that advice and go for that PhD. I did not do it personally because I just wasn't dedicated enough to science, I guess, that I was like, probably not right now. Maybe I'll explore it in the future. Um, yeah. Okay, so, yes, Nirja. Uh, though, though the title of our program is Roadmap to US, you have touched so many areas in relation to that and tried to satisfy all the questions for all the uh, people who are asking. So, I would suggest you to give your mail ID so that if any student really want to go for US, one to one communication will be there and he or she will get a good guidance from you, specific guidance from you. Yes. Sure. Uh, I'll be happy to. Nirija, one more question is from Varad Muthal. Can you, uh, can you a uh, little bit elaborate uh, blockchain? Yes, sir. Uh, just question is not from me. It's from student Mr. Sindhan. So he is asking ki why blockchain is the most safest technology in healthcare. Or in healthcare solutions, basically, they wanted to know about. It. So again, blockchain, AI, uh, machine learning, this is all in interdisciplinary bit. Like I said, uh, here, this it will all come under this, right? And when I say that, uh, there's tons of people who are who are already in the field uh, and I wouldn't be the best person to advise you on that. Uh, since I'm in core R&D, uh, we don't use any blockchain, none, zero. Uh, okay. It's not relevant in my my case, so. so. Yeah. Thanks, Hi, Nirja. Nice to Hello. see you here. Nice to see you. Yeah, actually, I have one question. Means, uh, who has inspired you to go for US? Means, what is your well, question to go for US? Uh, so the thing is, so my parents, both of them were doctors. Uh, uh, and my brother, he's also a doctor. And I don't know, there was this stubborn thing that I had in my mind that I was like, so oh, I don't want to be a doctor. I want to do something in an adjacent field, which was the next adjacent field is pharmacy, right? Uh, medicines, dive a little bit deeper into that. Uh, and that's why I chose to pursue B Farm. Uh, when I chose to pursue B Farm, since my dad, he's a doctor, the only thing that he could think of that doctors, that pharmacists do is that, you know, the medical reps who go around uh, from the companies and ask the doctors to prescribe something. So he, and the second thing would be retail pharmacy. So in his opinion, so in the eyes of a doctor, that's all a pharmacist does, right? Give you prescription, give, give you medicines that the doctor has advised, that the doctor has prescribed and just hands it to you. And I was always like, no, there is more to pharmacy than just being an MR or uh, just giving, just dispensing medicines. And you're clearly missing that because I used to say that, how do you know what drugs to give for what indication, right? So you, the doctors only know what drugs to give for a particular indication because there has been research that people like us do now, right? And we do, we do the research, we make that recommendation to, uh, to the boards, right? That this is an indication. This seems to work on this. Can we pursue this further in clinical trials? And that's when it gets pursued in clinical trials. And that's when it comes out, gets recommended by FDA 
to the doctors and only then can a doctor prescribe that medicine to their patients, right? So there is this big knowledge gap or avoidance that people tend to have as to what role a pharmacist plays in all of this. Thank you. Of course. Yes, if anyone have to ask the question, then proceed. I think uh, student already asked questions. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here. I was, I was very excited to talk to every one of you uh, and get tons of feedback from you guys. Um, I, would I would be happy to be in touch. Uh, so, yeah, thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you very much, Nirja, for interacting in such a nice way. Thanks a lot. I would like to request Dr. Reset Sayed, sir, to proceed further for the vote of thanks. Yeah, it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion of virtual national level student development program. As a coordinator of program, I on behalf of Amrutwani College of Pharmacy and the entire fraternity of the institution, first of all, extend my most sincere thank to Almighty God for making this program possible. With his blessings and grace, we are able to organize this program. Indeed, bringing 14 people together on one platform is quite a tougher task. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation to students for their eagerness towards participation in this virtual national level student development program. I am grateful to Chairman, Board of Studies, Pharmaceutical Chemistry, Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University and Principal Dr. D.Y. Patil, Institute of Pharmaceutical Science and Research, Pimpri Pune, Dr. Sohan Chitlange for gracing this occasion and addressing participants. I am thankful to Amrutwani, Sheti and Shikshan Vikas Sansta for granting permission to organize virtual national level student development program. I am extremely grateful to our principal Dr. M.J. Chawan for inspirational thoughts and providing encouragement to do the best. I would like to express my appreciation to our alumna, Ms. Nirja Bangre, Senior Research Associate at Gilad Sciences, California, USA for accepting our invitation and gracing today's informative session and highlighting career opportunities in USA. I would also like to express my appreciation to our distinguished alumni, Mr. Sambaji Kedkar, who is clinical research scientist at Rasayani Biologics Private Limited, Pune. Then Mr. Amit Pause, senior scientist and assistant manager at Bharat Serum and Vaccine Limited, Mumbai. Then Mr. Prashant Deshpande, external operational manager at Novartis Hyderabad. Then Parth Tucker, Assistant Manager, Formulation and Development at Cadilla Healthcare Limited, Ahmedabad. Then Mr. Prasad Gunjal, Formulation and Development Scientist at Invencia Healthcare Private Limited, Thane. Then Mrs. Sarujini Gule, Assistant Manager, Quality Assurance at Fairing Pharmaceuticals, Mumbai. Then Mr. Swapnil Gorpade, Manager Patents at Abbott Healthcare Private Limited, Mumbai. Then Mr. Sagar Paste, Regulatory Affairs Program Manager at Philips, Pune. Then Mr. Pramod Bise, team leader, Virgo Pharma Research Laboratory, Private Limited, Verna Goa. Then Dr. Mukesh Sonavne, product specialist at Lab India Analytical Instrument, Private Limited, Navi Mumbai. Then Mr. Jalinder Sagar, production manager at Sandoz, Mumbai. Then Mrs. Ratna Ahir Rao, lab QA head at Indico Remedies Limited, Goa. Then Mr. Santosh Bujbal, PhD research scholar at the University of Auckland, New Zealand, for accepting our invitation as a speaker and being a part of national level, uh, level to, uh, student development program. Further, I am grateful to Professor Sanket Kalmik and Professor Arthi Varunse for their efforts in planning of this event. I would like to express my sincere thank to Dr. Vishal More and team, then Mr. Varad Mutal for managing today's event. I also wish to express my sincere thanks to all head of department, Dr. D.P. Asse, then uh, Dr. Raman Kachwe, then Dr. Uh, Dr. Deepak Rao, 
then Velis sir and entire teaching faculty and non-teaching staff for their untiring efforts and enormous cooperation in accomplishment of this program. I once again thank to all participants for valuable presence and making today's event memorable and hopes they will definitely boost their knowledge in upcoming episodes 